joy or happiness, success or failure, peace or dismay. The foundations of our life rest on the words we receive. A word of hope and guidance, translated from the Temple of Solomon in Brazil. You are listening to a word of faith with Bishop Macedo. Hello, my friends. God bless all of you. May God, in His infinite and merciful compassion, come and meet your needs right now in this moment. May His word, which we have announced, be fulfilled in your life today that it may be fulfilled in your life today that you may be dwelling and hidden kept guarded in the secret place of the most high this is the will of God he God did not deliver Daniel from the lion's den but he delivered Daniel in the cave of the lions in the cave of the lions closing the mouth of the lions the same thing with his friends Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego they were not delivered from being thrown into the furnace but there in the furnace they were dwelling in the secret place of the Most High and were not touched and not a single strand of hair was burnt so God is like this he fulfilled his word his word is a shelter for those who trust in it it's a shelter for those who firm their faith it's a shelter for those who are of God who truthfully assume their faith in the Lord Jesus above the father the mother the children the family their lives their money etc their personal projects God is with those who honor him he said those who honor me I will honor them but those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed so when a person is taken for example to the cave of the lions to the lion's den but they do not have their lives firmed focused on the rock which is the Lord Jesus then the lion brings these situations so we see many people being surrendered to the lions of this world because they did not have their lives based founded on the person of the Lord Jesus Christ this is very important extremely important Jesus said he who loves his father his mother more than me is not worthy of me the one who loves the son or the daughter more than me is not worthy of me the one who loves his life more than me is not worthy of me so what does love mean to love the Lord Jesus it's to walk according to his word according to his righteousness according to his integrity and character it's to walk with a life where you are ashamed of nothing you walk with your head held high because your conscious is clean pure so with a person who has a pure conscience it's cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus it's sanctified and separated firmed on their commitment with the Lord Jesus 
than in the moments where they are suffocated, where they're pressed, then the wings of the Almighty God protects this person. So I'm sure you've seen many people who were this, who were that. Oh, I was a pastor, I was a bishop, I was an assistant, I was, I was, I was, and I was. I was because, in truth, I never was. I, because the one who is, the one who truly is, of God, remains forever. As God says, I am. Those who are is, they are, and they maintain themselves in him for the rest of their lives. So if you, my friend, you have deceived yourself with emotions and feelings and just feelings of what is written, oh, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my, my fortress and my refuge. A thousand at my side, ten thousand at my other side, but I'll, it will not come near me. You know this. But you're also fallen. You're fallen. You're falling. How come? A thousand and ten thousand is falling, but you're also falling. How come? Do you not know of this word? Have you not trusted this word? Oh, I have. No, if you had trusted, you would be standing right now. This is the reality. Understand, my friend, God, God is great. He makes nothing imperfect. He is perfect and does not do anything small. Now, unfortunately, human beings who have the right to choose, they have the right to choose, to opt for good or evil. They normally choose evil, which is obviously they will reap the fruit of this choice. And what can God do? God is with me while I'm with him. If I leave him, he will also leave me. This is clear. It's obvious. I serve my Lord. I serve him with great pleasure and great satisfaction. I'm happy serving him. But if one day I stop, as it won't happen. But if I leave him, it's obvious he will leave me as well. So I am the one who chooses. I determine. If God were to choose our destiny, he would want the best for all of us, but he gave us the right, the liberty of choosing between good and evil, between eating and not eating the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So, my friend, use your faith with wisdom. It's not enough to say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But you lack everything. Why do you lack everything? Because the Lord has not been your shepherd. Because the Lord has not been a faithful shepherd. No, no, it's not that. The problem is that you have not been a sheep of the flock of the good shepherd. Then you suffer the consequences because you're alone. My friend, when we read the Bible, we have to get, we have to attract, we have to drink 
of his spirit. The words, the letters are not enough. The letters are not enough because letters kill. The letter makes people become fanatics. What makes the difference is the spirit of the word. The spirit of the word. The spirit of the word makes you receive intelligent faith. The faith that reasons. The faith that contradicts the faiths of this world. The faith which is intelligent with reasons, which stops and evaluates with reasons. Did you know I had knowledge of Jesus with the age of 18? But I only surrendered my life to him at the age of 19. It took more than a year for me to convert. Do you know why? Because I was weighing, I was always thinking, weighing between serving Jesus and being his servant or serving my desires, my projects, my life. But when I decided to surrender, when I decided to surrender my life to him, then I went with everything. Because for me, it's like this. When it comes to faith, the intelligent faith, I am radical. Either it is or it's not. It's all or nothing. It's everything for everything. So I took my decision. God until then or from there started to guide my intellect, direct, teach. He did not make of my being a robot, no. Though receiving the Holy Spirit, I have and will always have the right to choose to hear his voice and obey or hear his voice and disobey. It's my right. Although we want, we want to follow our desires, our lusts, though we want to serve ourselves, to me it doesn't matter because I prefer death because I know what is to serve myself. I know what it means for the time that I served myself I experienced uh, a lot of pain, disappointments and etc. But when I decided to put everything on the altar, all my life, my future, my dreams, my projects, I left everything on the altar. I became empty. I was naked, completely naked. Then he filled me with the Holy Spirit and gave me direction to go on. So, till today, it will be 57 years, well, 58. We are in this faith and praise God. He has delivered me from the lion's den. He has delivered me from the fiery furnace. He has delivered me from the desert. He has guarded me. That's why I try to pass on to people that which he has given me. And it's pointless for you to simply cite, recite biblical scriptures thinking that that will be, fulf will be fulfilled in your life automatically. It won't. It won't. It won't. You have to drink of the spirit of the word because the word of God is spirit. 
Jesus said, My words are spirit and life. So today, tonight, later on in the day, we will speak more about this, of this shelter of God, the secret place of the Most High. We are going to speak about how you can enter the secret place of the Most High. What should you do? What should you surrender? What should you do to receive the Spirit of God that He may make a dwelling inside of you and you may have a dwelling in His shelter? Oh, my friend, I would like that all of you would understand this. I would like it so much, but very much that you would comprehend this. God is great. He's perfect. God is love, mercy, and compassion. But He, above all, if we can say this, God is righteousness. He is righteousness. And He does not mix with unrighteousness and sin and mistakes. He doesn't mix with our will, our impurities and our instincts. He doesn't mix with them. Either you do His will and receive His benefits as a reward of the good fruit, or you don't do His will and you suffer the consequences. This is the reality. You know, Solomon said this. Very nice. Solomon, after having everything, being the wisest man in the world, never was or never will there will be a wise man as Solomon. Never will we find a man as rich as Solomon. But he saw that all his wisdom, all his riches, all his glory was vanity. And he reached the point of saying, those who love money will never be satisfied. I would add the following. Those who love anything in this world will never be satisfied. Will never be satisfied. So if you want a life which is blessed, make a pact with God. Make a pact with God. But go with everything. Place your everything on the altar. And in reality, the everything you have or which you will have before what the altar offers between us, it's nothing. It's nothing. Because what do we have to give to the Lord which will add to us? Only one thing which we can offer to the Lord which will add to Him. When we take up the cup of salvation, we call upon His name and we honor Him with our lives day after day after day. This means to dwell in the shelter of God, to live in the secret place of the Most High, to live safe and securely in peace with yourself and above all with Him. God bless you and until later on, in the name of Jesus, Amen.